Hey you guys, welcome to Bones Collector and right now I'm going to take a few minutes and show you all the games that I picked up at Dice Tower Con East. These are the games that we got off the virtual flea market, which is something that they do before the convention. Uh, it, it goes on for months before the convention. You're tra trading, buying, selling games, and then when the convention starts you have a time period where you go in to the uh, it's a big room and, and everybody exchanges all their games that, that they purchased and traded. So uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to get value and by that I mean you're going to pay significantly below MSRP which probably doesn't set well with the Dice Tower <laughs> vendors. Uh, they have a vendors hall and I'm sure they want to sell their games and, and they do it at a huge price by the way. So it's very expensive to go to the vendor hall and purchase a game. You but, pay MSRP. Yeah, you pay MSRP. And uh, this is just a, a wonderful resource. And there's other conventions that do this, and they have physical flea markets. Dice Tower has since canceled their physical flea market to disallow us to do that. So that's what we did. And this is what uh, I've gotten, and I just want to run through uh, the games that I picked up on the virtual flea market. And I did buy one game from the vendor hall, so I'll tell you what that is also. But I'm going to start out the video with the first game and because I made a mistake <laughs> this is a game called Rune Wars it's out of print and I wanted to look and see what year it came out 2012 so this game is 12 years old it's out of print and it's still in the shrink so I bought it off a guy for $60 because the original Rune Wars game came in a big coffin box it had all kinds of miniatures in it and I said I don't want, I don't want anything to do with that game I don't like all those miniatures and so when I saw that there was an actual revised edition, which it says right there, I thought, well, and, and I saw the size of the box, I'm like, well, they had to get rid of all that crap, you know, all those miniatures. So I bought it because there was not an unboxing on YouTube. So I didn't know exactly what was in the box. But when I got it home, I read the back, and it has 196 plastic figures in it. <laughs> and if you watch this channel, you know that makes me crazy. They are different colors, but some of them are gray. And I just am disappointed that I didn't know that. I mean, people make mistakes, and I made a mistake. So I'm going to leave this in the shrink. Again, because this is a collector's item, somebody's going to want this, and I'm going to sell it to somebody that really wants and doesn't mind all that plastic in the box. But, yeah, so I got Rune Wars, by mistake, whatever. I'm going to get rid of that, just keep it in the shrink, make it just that much more collectible. And then I got this game, still in the shrink, called Vagrant Song. And I've been wanting to play this game. And it's from 2000 and, uh, did it, uh, 2021. And it's about vagrants or hobos that are on a haunted train. And... I love the theme of that because I, I just like a uh, scary type of thematic games. Um, this one is no exception. I was curious about it. I've watched it played several times on YouTube and I'm going to enjoy this game. And it has acrylic standees in it that are gorgeous. I can't wait to play this. It's like a campaign game I think in there and, and there's so much you can do with it. We've already ordered the expansion for it which I, I want just because it has more figurines. and. I can't wait to play this. I'm hoping it's as good as I think it is because I want to make sure that I put it in my uh, Halloween games video this year. But that's Vagrant Song by Weird Word Games. All right, then we also, my game of the year last year for 2023, if you watch this channel, was World Wonders. I still love that game, still love playing it. It was my favorite game of that year, and they have a Wonders Pack. Now, Mundo Wonders Pack that has nine new buildings in it, and we picked that up at the con. For, again, you're going to pay a lot of money for stuff there. This little tiny box, $25. But, you know, I wanted it, and I wanted to add it to our game. So that's World Wonders Mundo Pack. And then, uh, I don't know if you've heard of this game, Spirits in the Forest, by Michael Schacht. Now, Michael Schacht has a game called Wari Deluxe that we have in our library, and I enjoy that game. It's an area control game, Laura, and I love it. And this one is... Uh, a simple game where you have uh, spirit tiles in the forest and you're going to it's a set collection thing you're just going to be selecting them selecting them from a big display and there's certain ways you have to go about selecting them in iconography that you're going to match up and so forth an easy game to play it's fast it's beautiful to look at and this is a super deluxe version uh, so 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 nice uh, we've already played it, I don't know, three or four times, mm -hmm. it, you, you know, and it goes quick, so you just set it right back up and play it again. But Spirits of the Forest, that's just a nice little game. Sometimes you don't want to play a three-hour affair, and games like this are priceless, and that's Spirits of the Forest. All right, 
And then another game that I've never heard of until I uh, saw it on the VFM on the virtual flea market was Die of the Dead. This game is bizarre looking. It kind of looks, if you have ever seen the box of, of a skull, that bidding game, uh, or bluffing game that uh, we have also, it's a party game, but it looks just like that, that, that skull on there. But this game intrigued me because it's a dice game. I just want to show you real quick. It's a dice game that uses coffins that you, you can, there's four of them in here, and you're going to put your dice in the coffin and shake it up, and whatever values those dice end up, your player color, that you're going to win that coffin or whatever and put dice on this. What's that called? The die? The... Yeah, it's on the, you have to look on the. <laughs> I can't on remember the book right there on this you. thing. It has to ascend that staircase. It has, it has a staircase in here, a cardboard staircase, and you have to ascend that. This ghost something. It, it was a, it was you have to get to the top top step to to, to win. To do but it looked intriguing to me, and again, it's got a theme that's interesting. I just like themes that kind of even in my Euro games, I like themes that have an interesting theme, and this looked like something I wanted to play, and we got that. I think for twenty five bucks or twenty bucks or something like that. All right, I bought a little dungeon. A uh, one deck dungeon game. I, I I like to keep a few games like this. This is a this can be played solo or with two players, and I like to keep little games like this sometimes because maybe you want to sit down or I want to sit down and play a game without Lori, and uh, I'll sit down and play something like this or Mini Rogue or you know something you can put down on the table very quickly as a solo game and play it very fast. I, I like little quick solo games when I play solo games. So that's one deck dungeon. I think I got that. I don't know, fifteen bucks or something. Twelve. Twelve bucks. I'll take it. <laughs> Then, this is a storybook adventure game called Stuff Fables, and it looks very cute. I've watched it since it came out. It's been out for a couple of years now, and I just didn't know if I wanted to keep it in the house or not, whether I would like it, but I decided to go ahead and do it because I had to buy one, get one off, or get half. Buy one, one get, get one, one half, half off, off yeah. of this guy that was selling these games. So, so I got half off. <laughs> ended up getting this for $15. And... It, I like everything about it. I've been through the box already. Again, I've watched it played before. It's a story adventure adventure book story game. You're going to go through a story and, and adventure through it with these uh, characters that come in the flops and stitch and, and uh, childlike characters like that. It has a little character in it. A girl, little girl is sleeping at night. And she, I guess these are uh, dreams or something she's having. But uh, it's by Plat Hat Games, so the publishing is very nice. The only disappointing part is... Gray plastic miniatures in here, I don't like that. It would have been so much more immersive and beautiful for children and adults if they had been cardboard, full color standees, because they'd be in color. I cannot stand those gray plastic things that are just going to be gray for the rest of your life. So. By the same guy that did Mice and Mystics. Oh yeah, this guy, Jerry Hawthorne, did Mice and Mystics and Aftermath. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, that's stuff fables. So then let's talk about a game that I had never heard of. <laughs> but I thought it looked pretty cute. It's called Ghost Betwixt, and it is a cooperative adventure game. And Stuff Fables is cooperative too, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I, I failed to mention Stuff Fables is cooperative. So Vagrant Song. Yeah, and Vagrant Song. I didn't say that. That's so cooperative yeah. Cooperative too. And this, yeah, this, Most is, of what this we is cooperative. Is. Well, Laura and I love cooperative adventure games, and so I, I, I do try to seek these out. And this one here is a very lesser known game. Uh, the publishing is top notch in this game. This box is super heavy with stuff. And it's about a family uh, that is adventuring through a house, I believe. And it's a it's a blended family, which is kind of an, mm -hmm. uh, interesting in itself. So you've got a blended family, which is cool because there's that's, that's, that's this year, you know, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's current. You know, blended families are a thing that is all over the world, and it's nice to see somebody pay attention to that in board games. But, yeah, I can't wait to play this game. And it's, it's a cooperative game, and it looks pretty difficult. And I've been through it, the, the components and stuff, and <laughs> it's got some really cute stuff in it, and that's Ghost Be Twice. I like the art. Yeah, it's and I got that for 15 different. bucks. Yeah. Yeah, it was incredible. All right, then... Where did I go with this one? I've been wanting to play this game, Machina Arcana. This again is a cooperative horror adventure game in the Cthulhu Mythos universe. This box, this thing has to weigh 15 pounds. There's so much crammed in here. It's brand new. I got it for $50 with the upgrade pack and one of the expansions. Uh, so just a ton of material. This game, is uh, MSRP, was up around $100 by itself. So I, I was able to pick that up from a guy that does a YouTube channel. He sold this to me and I can't wait to play it. 
It's got custom dice in it that are gorgeous and everything in it. Uh, the player boards, everything in this game is beautiful. I can't wait to break into it. That's Machina Arcana. And no minis. And no minis. I, yeah, I, it's got a <laughs> bunch of standees. This is one of those games of that ilk. They generally have, you know, 80, 90 plastic miniatures in it that make the box this thick and this wide. And that's all standees. So that's one of the reasons why I love it. As is this game, Dead of Winter. Long Night. I have Dead of Winter, and we've had we played that years and years ago. All the zombies are standees in both that Dead of Winter, the regular game, and this one. And I can't imagine how big this box would be if all these zombies were gray plastic miniatures. But they're full color cardboard standees, and I love that in this game. I loved it in Dead of Winter, and I wanted to get the full set so that I could just play my way to the zombie apocalypse. And there's so much in this box. Again, by Plat Hat, they do a nice job with their publishing. Mm -hmm. That's Dead of Winter, Long Night. This game, Lori and I had back when it first came out, and we sold it, and we were sorry we did. I've done that before. I've sold a game and bought it back, and I'm going to do it this time. This is a competitive game for two to five players, and it is, let's see, oh, John Gilmore, who did Dead of Winter, by the way, and Matt Riddle, who did Fleet and Morocco, and Ben Pinchback, who helped with Fleet and Morocco. Remo Remo Fleet and Morocco. <laughs> and again, this is a Euro style game, pick up and deliver, but mm -hmm. it's got an interesting theme that uh, post apocalyptic, yeah, Mad Max type of, of theme to it. And I, I, I don't want to take, take a lot of time, and, but the publishing this game, and it comes with all these game trays. See, and that was components. new. Yeah. For, that was ahead of its time. That yeah. didn't happen. I think this was the games. first one that did that. Yeah, it might be. And uh, we had this back in the day. It's just so nice to see this kind of publishing that long ago. Yeah. And I, I should have looked up the year, but I don't have it. But yeah, I mean, everything in here is all just wonderful, wonderfully uh, published and packaged. And, and I'm glad that we got this back. I can't, again, I can't wait to get these games to the table. But yeah, that's Wasteland Express. 2017. Delivery service. 2017, so it's seven years old. Okay. Yeah, we're glad to have it back. Now, Lori and I just recently played Scythe again. And we've played that game quite a few times. And I had mixed feelings about it. And then the last time we played it, I just fell in love with it for some reason. And then I went out and picked up a... There's a new expansion. It's just 32 encounter cards. The encounter cards inside that you turn over and it gives you choices and tells you a story about what's happening with that choice. And I just love that part of the game. And this expansion just gave you 32 more of those. That's the kind of expansions that game publishers should put out. Hey, give us more of that deck of cards that makes this game amazing. And I, I, I have to applaud Stonemeyer Games for doing that. And I don't think Jamie Stegmeyer gets enough credit for the development and design of Scythe. I love the game. And so I told Lori, let's watch out for the expansions. Let's, let's pick up everything. But we already had the Wind Gambit, and then we picked up in Invaders from Afar, which has uh, the two other factions in it, uh, so that you can have all the full complement of factions in the game. And it has some faction-specific uh, components, some global components, but hey, that is something that we wanted to pick up, and we got that, and we got the Rise of Fenris, which makes the game cooperative. It can, but it it's can. also a campaign. And it has, yeah, it has a, a, a campaign of eight games that you play, and it has modular components to, in it so that you can just add one or two things if you wish, mix and match, and tailor make the game to your liking, which is fantastic, and I can't wait to implement a bunch of the stuff out of Rise of Fenris because I haven't played it but I've heard so many cra crazy good things about it, and I love Scythe right now the way it is. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. My favorite adventure game, is it my favorite? It's one, one of the top two favorites. I would say Mage Knight is probably my favorite fantasy adventure game, but then my second favorite is Legends of Andor. And so, I'm always on the lookout for Legends of Andor. Now I have Legends of Andor, and I have Legends of Andor, The Last Hope, those two boxes. And I didn't have Journey to the North. A guy sold this to me for twenty dollars, still in the shrink wrap, as you can see. So we I, it for I pick. Did we trade it? Yeah. I, forget for what, but we trade. Oh man, the game was amazing. I mean, I was so happy to get this because it's hard to find the Journey to the North. And then also, this guy was selling Legends of Andor, which I have already. 
But inside this box is the New Heroes expansion and the Star Shield expansion. And I think I got this for $25. And Might have been 30 The, the, Star, Field, the Star Shield expansion is more than that by itself. Cause, and you can't find it. Yeah, so it, it, I had to have it. Uh, and I'm just going to gift my copy that I already have to a friend of mine that I work with. But uh, yeah, I picked that up with the two expansions. The lid comes off this, this box. You couldn't get a penny in here. Check that out. I mean, there's so much in here, and this is, again, a cooperative adventure game. It's unique in the fact that it has a thick chronicle of cards that you're going to read. It's going to have you do different adventures during the game, and the monster attack mechanic that goes on in the game is unique, and this is a tower defense game, and you are protecting the castle, and depending on the player count, you're only allowed to let so many monsters overrun that castle, and I mean, it's a few. It's like two or three, and then if you allow more than that, you lose the game, and when you battle a monster in that game and defeat it, it counts against you, not for you. So you want to avoid battle whenever you possibly can. I love that. It, but sometimes you have to kill them before they overrun the castle. So you ha you, you're very, very strategic and thought-provoking uh, situation where you're trying to say, do, do we need to kill that monster? Do we need to battle with them? And if we do, let's do it. And the timer, it subtracts it the time. The timer, yeah. It just advances that to the end of the game. So you can't just run out and battle everything. And I love that about Legends of Andor. There's so much in that box that I adore. Again, my second favorite. Maybe my first favorite. I don't know. <laughs> It'd be arguable. Then I found a guy that was getting rid of Folklore of the Affliction. I think I traded you did. a copy of Cascadia for this. Yes. Uh, Lori and I decided to move Cascadia on. We love Cascadia. It's a wonderful game. But we liked Calico and Veridant, and now we have Nocturne, Nocturne. and those three games from Flat Out. We like those better because there's more pressure on you in those games, and we love that pressure, just like in Legends of Andor. Folklore of the Affliction is an adventure card game. I like this game because it comes on the back. It says 72 full-color standees included, and I love it for that. So it's got a lot of cards in it. Game tiles that you're going to explore and and do various things in battling, uh, custom dice in the game, which were not included. <laughs> yeah, it was missing some dice. It was missing some dice in this game. I contacted the guy, I'm going to see him down there today, and he's going to get me the dice for that game. He just misplaced them. And I'm going to talk about one game we did buy from the vendor hall market. I didn't do it without playing it. <laughs> this was in the library. I saw the game in the vendor hall market. Then when we went to pick out a game in the library. Did you find it in the library? I did, yes. Yeah. I didn't know you were in the market looking yeah. at it. Yeah. I picked it out while you were looking. I was listening to the guy explain the game in the vendor hall. And he, of course, they have a whole bunch of copies there for sale. And then Lori checked it out of the library and said, hey, let's play this. I said, well, I was just look, watching a guy demo that. <laughs> and uh, so we sat down and played it. And at first, we were like, oh, what's going on in this game? I mean, at conventions, if you watch our videos, I sit down, read the rule book, teach the game, and play it, you know, as fast as I can go. So you're going to miss things. And we didn't play it entirely correctly. No. But the more we got into it, I, we both said, I really like this game. <laughs> and here's the thing I love about this game the most is all the characters in it. You're, you're a, a press chicken society. <laughs> and you're looking to build your own world, your own coop, where you can live in peace, but all these predators are trying to stop you from doing that. And in this game, you can't tell too much from the back, but it has every chicken character, and I don't know how many there are. Uh, I wish I had looked it up. Uh, maybe I think there's eight. Eight? Maybe eight. more, I don't know. Yeah, I mean a bunch. And uh, they have, each character is in a spiral notebook, a little spiral notebook. And it, I mean, the publishing of this game is off the hook. It is. But when you level up, you just turn the page and you get a, spe a new special ability and, and you get more health and more eating ability, which levels you <laughs> up to the next level. And you're going to go up three levels on your character. And then the predators, I don't know, there's eight, or, there's probably at least 10 or 12 I don't predator know how many of those notebooks. <laughs> and they are on the board also. And when you battle with them and you defeat them, they turn the page and get more powerful. <laughs> and they have dice effects on them. So you're going to roll custom dice. Thank you very much. There publisher yeah custom dice this is what they look like and uh, they look like a chicken <laughs> got some dice here sculpted white custom dice and it's an anatomically correct chicken so you have the chicken head for a six and then the two is chicken the chicken feet 
and the three is one wing, the four is another wing, and the five is the tail, and the one is just what that it's mean? behind. It's always just behind his butt. Okay, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Where the but, eggs come out. <laughs> but when you battle those monsters, they're going to have dice effects on them, and it'll say if you roll. Uh, a four to a six, this is going to happen to you. If you roll a two to three, this is going to happen to you. If you roll a one, there's no effect. So good luck, yeah. because if, more than likely there's going to be something bad that's going to happen to you. And then you turn the page and it gets more powerful. And then it has one predator at the top where his notebook is closed. And you have to defeat all those predators. It's a cooperative game, mm -hmm. for, failed to mention. We love that. It's a cooperative game. You have to defeat all these predators on the board before you have three seasons spring, summer, and fall that you go through, and if you ha haven't defeated all of them by the end of fall, you lose. And so that last predator has a closed book, and when you get to him, he immediately opens up to his most horrific page, the third page, mm -hmm. and you have to defeat him on that page. Times three. Times three. So he's got a ton of life. I think we said 17 life Something he should have like had. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, we, we didn't we see did, that We skipped rules. that part in the rules. <laughs> we skipped. And we still lost. <laughs> yeah. That's right. This is going to be a nice light fun. I mean, as we, we played it, I looked at Laura and I said, I'm having a good time playing this game. <laughs> and that leleling up system in those It took notebooks, me a while to like it. Yeah, it did, yeah. Because I was frustrated with it. But it, after we played it, I'm like, you know what? That was fun. <laughs> that leveling up system in those spiral notebooks is fantastic. And the player boards that you have have a cutout for the spiral part of the notebook. So it, lays, in. Yeah. So it just lays flat and you turn those pages. It's a fantastic publishing job. Everything in this box, all linen cardstock, the player boards are Double dual okay. layered. All the tokens are screen printed. The food tokens, the eggs are beautiful, and the board is beautiful. Andrew Bosley does the art in this game. I just really was surprised because I told her I'm not buying anything that vendor holds. Yeah. <laughs> but I I fell prey to flock together, and I really really am happy about that game. As of 2024, it will probably be on my top 10 yeah. list. All right, then I went tiny epic crazy. Yeah. What's this? Oh, we got a little expansion for Carcassonne. Mini, one of the mini expansions. Mini expansion. Yeah, yeah which we, we love Carcassonne. I still have my original Car have that. Carcassonne's in my top 10 games of all time. It, it's been with me forever. I love playing it every time I get it out. It's uh, And people say, oh, how can that be a top 10 in your board game 100? Because it just is that engaging. I love Carcassonne. It's in, supremely popular. I don't know how many millions of copies have been sold to Carcassonne, but hey, it carries its own weight. It's a great, great game. We picked up a copy of Legendary James Bond deck building game expansion, and it is The Spy Who Loved Me with Roger Moore. That is my favorite Legendary game system. So I got this last movie, so I've got every movie in mm -hmm. this game, and Lauren, I love that game. The mechanics in it are different than other, other Legendary games, and it's just fabulous. Hard to win, though, wasn't it? Yeah. What's that one card called at the end? I can't remember. Gosh, you can't get rid of it. <laughs> no. you, I mean, it literally has a card you can't defeat. Yeah, so you, you have to move You have to keep it at bay because if it goes off the off the track, you've lost the game. And you, so you have to defeat all the other, uh, whatever those guys are called, in order to win the game. But that guy just keeps moving. And it's horrible. But I love it. <laughs> it's a kind of horrible that I love. Then I went Tiny Epic Crazy. We used to have Tiny Epic Quest, Tiny Epic Zombies. And we reacquired those, still in the shrink wrap, very inexpensively. And I'll let those two go with them, or, uh, dungeons. But yeah, this comes with some kind of an expansion, Tiny Epic Quest and Tiny Epic Quest mat, play mat, which I, it came with it. Yep. I'm not a play mat guy, but uh, because this doesn't fit anywhere, what are you going to do with it? And put it in a tube yeah. to buy a tube. I don't know. Maybe I'll use it. I don't know. And look neat. Yeah. And then we got Tiny Epic Zombies. This is still a shrink also. Deluxe edition, I don't know, 15 bucks or something. Some of the tiny epic games I like, some I don't like. I like the ones that I'm showing you. I like Quest and I like Zombies. It takes place in the mall. It has those meeples that you can put components on. What are they called? Item, Item meeples. meeples, yes. And then I picked up a copy of Tiny Epic Dungeons. It came with this Perilous Expansion, or Dungeon Stories it's called. A perilous expansion for Tiny Epic Dungeons. And so I got this with the expansion, and also it came with the boss meeples and a whole set of custom dice, dungeon dice pack. I can't wait to play that Not game. Not all going to fit in that box, that's yeah. for sure. Yep, but I can't wait to play it. <laughs> then we got this game for five bucks, and it looked pretty cool. 
Lori was intrigued by it. You play as a dream catcher and you save innocent children in their sleep. I mean, I, it just sounds cute, doesn't it? And it's a smaller box game. It plays in 25 to 30 minutes, two to four, five play. Is it cooperative? Yeah, co-op yes, game. Yes, cooperative. But it has some nice publishing uh, in the box and we really can't wait to play this game. It looks so cute because there's cute games that aren't good. And uh, this <laughs> yeah. one looks pretty good. Oh, there we go. What you have, yeah, decks of cards that do various different things. But there you can see the insert in the box. And again, we got it for $5. I was pleased to do so. And the person that sold us to it seemed to think it was a very good game. They said it was cute. Yeah, yeah. We so we're gonna, we would like it. We can't wait to try it. And so yeah, we can't wait to play this game and we'll let you know what we think of it when we when we get it played. And uh, yeah, that's Dream Catchers. And you're probably going to see a little jump cut there because our camera ran out of batteries. So don't be alarmed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next game we'll talk about is one that Lori loves, and that's this uh, Ghostbusters Protect the Barrier. She had to get it back. We uh, had sold it, but we, this is a game we played with our grandkids when they were young. Came out in 2015 in celebration of the movie with the girls in it, and I loved the movie. It was funny. We've never won this game yet, have we? The kids want it back. Yeah. No, my grandkids won it back. They're like, you sold that? I was like, yeah, well, get it back. We want to play it. They, we've never won this game. No. I mean, we've been, we've had a character on the doorstep of going out for the victory and we just never have been able to win it's a hard game to win but my grandkids love it and they wanted me to get it back so we did and we're going to play it with them and to be fair this came out in 2015 uh, our oldest grandson was 11 mm. he's going to college uh, in the fall so yeah but they remember all these board games we played with them and they and they have this nostalgic feeling and they they get mad when we sell some of them so yeah that one's back protect the barriers and Another game we reacquired is Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. This thing weighs a ton because it's got the Monster Box of Monsters expansion in it. And we traded our copy of Alm, which we loved, for this. And this game is one that... It's the best Harry Potter game, I think, that's out there, in, in my opinion. And I love it so much because it's a deck-building game. And we do have some house rules we use in this game. I just don't think the game designers and developers did their homework completely in regards to this game, but I love playing it. And Lori and I will sit and play it and play it, won't we? Uh, we oh, yeah. played the heck out of this game, and we enjoy it so much we had to get it back. And the house rule that we have in the base game is simply a market rule where when you have the market of cards and you're drawing cards off the top of the deck, if there's a duplicate in the market already, you just put that card on top of that card and draw another one to fill in that empty space. So that's a house rule in the base game. Then the monster box of monsters, we have a house rule where you... What are the house rules? we got two of them. You always include Crab and Goyle as one of the cards. Yeah, you, you get an option on when you're building your villain deck, and we always... They say choose at random. We always choose Crab and Goyle to be in and the villain deck. And then the rest deck. are random. And then we said you can spend three dollars. dollars to take a detention out of your hand because your hand gets so clogged up. Yeah. So the other house rule that we have employed in the, the Monster Box of Monsters is that you can pay three dollars to remove a detention from your hand. The deck of cards in this game gets so thick that you may never get to cards that help you get those detention cards out of your hand and you they will just keep coming and there's no way to get rid of them unless you get lucky enough to get one of those cards that removes them. So we allow ourselves, that's a house rule, to spend three dollars, which is hard to do. Oh, I mean yeah. when you're playing a game three <laughs> bucks is, is hard to, yeah. to spend to get rid of a detention card, but it's necessary. The developers and designers did not do their homework because you can get to the point with those detention cards where you, the game is unplayable. Well, you'd have a whole hand of detention yeah. cards. I mean, I, I've drawn like four or five detention cards for mm -hmm. your hand. I mean, it's, it gets silliness. But you have to be able to get rid of those, and so we are allowed, you know, with our house rule, to spend three bucks to get rid of a detention card. So those two things I want to tell you make this game so much better. And uh, so two, two rules for the Monster Box of Monster and the one for the base game, if you're playing the base, just the base game, is to duplicate those market cards. But uh, such a fun game and it's so thematic. Uh, the movie stills that are in this box on the cards really bring the movie to life and bring this game to life. You have a nice board that you play on, which is very nice. Uh, it's just a fun game and one that we've enjoyed since it came out. I mean, we bought it immediately. And uh, we did have the Potions and Charms expansion, which we're not going to reacquire. We're going to be very happy with our uh, <laughs> Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle and the Monster Monster Monsters in this box. 
So we're very glad to get that back. And we've played it since, so. Yes, we have. Yeah. And then for $20, I was able to pick up this game, which I've never played. And uh, I was intrigued by it because I've seen it on uh, YouTube and people playing it and talking about it. And it is an adventure game. You know, I, I like that. Uh, we're going to travel around the verse. <laughs> like uh, Captain, what's his name, <laughs> on uh, Firefly ship, and we watched this whole series back in the day, yeah. and the movie, Serenity, and enjoyed it. We enjoyed the series very much, and we have just never played this. And I got this copy of 20 bucks, It's all the cards are still in the shrink, and it has an expansion in it too, so I was very fortunate to be able to pick that up very cheaply, and I'm, 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 I do that sometimes, if it's cheap, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll buy that for 20 bucks, and I want to play it. I'd never come in contact with it, and at a convention, I don't want to get a game like this out because it takes too long to play, and you don't want to sit there playing the same game for hours. But uh, yeah, Firefly, the game, Lauren, I can't wait to play that one. Then a game that I did pay a lot of money for is Gloom of Killforth, and I paid $50 for this, but it has an upgrade pack of cards and an expansion in it also. And Pimp My Gloom. And Pimp My Gloom, yeah. In this <laughs> box, you can hardly get the lid on top of it. This is an overland cooperative adventure game and we love uh, playing cooperatively I can't wait to play this game and the art on the cards is wonderful uh, very very pretty art on the cards I don't know where it ranks as far as art and board games because I have some pretty nice ones but I can't wait to play this game and again it's it's packed full lots of dice which I love and <laughs> and I can't wait to play it we'll do a video on it when we when we get the opportunity so that's Gloom of Killforth and then Another game we acquired in the Harry Potter universe is Talisman Harry Potter. This was still on the shrink and we bought it for $20. Now we have Kingdom Hearts Talisman. We're going to sell that to somebody that loves Disney. It was $25. I'm $25? Yes. And, uh, $25 and we're going to play this one. We like uh, we liked Kingdom Hearts mm -hmm. and we like the game. We've played it uh, three or four times and enjoyed it. So we went ahead and picked this one because we wanted to get this one in the Harry Potter universe because we are big fans of Harry Potter. So yeah, that's uh, Harry Potter Talisman. This is a game where you... I think you have to house rule the exploding dice into this. Oh, and, yeah, from yeah. the ta regular talisman from game. From regular yeah. talisman game and, and do some different changes. But it's a fun game where you're just simply rolling and moving. It's a yes, roll and move game. Move, a lot yeah. of people, you know, uh, doing encounter cards and so forth for locations and trying to get to the center of the board to win the game. But, yeah, that's Harry Potter. Now, all right, that's a little jump cut. The battery went dead again. <laughs> so Put in a bad battery. That wasn't this, smart. This is a, a game that we just acquired called Return to Dark Tower. And I did pay $130 for this, but it's brand new. And uh, I wanted to get this after I played the original version. And here's the thing. This uses an app, which is against my board gaming religion. <laughs> but I have some grandkids that... You know, they're enamored with their telephones and iPads and stuff like that. I, and we, they do play a lot of other board games with us, but they, it's hard to hold their attention. I thought with this game we will get this to the table. It's a cooperative game, and we're going to load the app in, and it has some atmospheric uh, music and noise and uh, narrative, I believe. And it does some of the bookkeeping for you on the app and then we'll, we'll play this game. But if you haven't seen this, it has a big centerpiece and you put skulls down in it mm -hmm. and it ejects the skulls out onto the board and you're going to place those on. So it has some, some nice minis, like islands or whatever they're called. You know, see, they haven't even taken the paper off of these play mats. And, uh, but yeah, these little, you're going to put your skulls on these different locations around that board, around that uh, dark tower. And yeah, all this stuff comes in the game with these, you know, makes the game, I'm sure, set up quicker. And So mm -hmm. we're going to give this a go. And I'm going to get my grandsons over here and my granddaughter and, and, and play this. I have four grandkids that I love doing things with and playing games with. And I can't wait to see what they think about Return to Dark Tower. That's it. That's what I've gotten from Dice Tower Con East this year. <laughs> I keep more games here than I probably would. If I didn't have this channel, I wouldn't have this many games, but we're at the 200 board game mark, something like that, and we like to stay there, so I had to sell games that I really, really love. Yes, uh, Some of hard. them, it was like cutting off a finger, I yeah, told somebody yesterday. It was yesterday. really hard to sell some but of those. But that's just the way board gaming is. You keep the ones that excite you the most. I mean, look how excited my cat Gravy is yeah. for, <laughs> for to play Return to Dark Tower. He's thrilled. He's going to love it when the skulls come out. He's going to love it. He's going to get up there and snatch one and run away before I even get my hand over it. Stop! You know. Okay, another game I acquired at the convention 
simply by accident. I'm going through the vendor hall, looking at all the new board games being sold, and one of the vendors had a stack of games behind him. And I said, hey, are those games for sale? They were older games. And uh, he said, yeah, I'll sell them. I said, well, how much you want for that copy of War of Mine? He said, 20 bucks. So I was interested in this game. This is a cooperative game, and it's a, a crazy, uh, kind of depressing theme, and the lid's on upside down. But I like this type of challenge, Laurie and I, where we're cooperatively trying to beat this game. And it looks interesting to me. It's an adventure game. It's got decks of cards where you do different encounters and make decisions uh, in the game. And I've seen people talk about it. I didn't really want it that badly because of the theme. But for $20, I can get it played. And hey, if I don't like it, I'm sure somebody else will want it for $20. But uh, yeah, that's this war of mine. Then, on Prime Days, you know, I, I, this was a, a haul about the convention, but I'm going to go ahead and include my games from Prime Days. And uh, to be fair, I want to tell you guys, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the video or not, but we sold almost 100 games in the last uh, couple of months and brought in probably 30. So we're, we're net seven, neg negative 70, which is where we wanted to be. We wanted to get rid of some games. So, uh, But I, there's some games that I wanted to get. And the one that I got on uh, Prime Days was Far Shore. Now, if you watched my Escape Winter video uh, from the last convention, we played Far Shore and we loved it, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We loved it. And the MSRP on that game was $99, and I said, no way. There's just no way I'm paying that for that game. And people commented, me, why don't you sell something else and go ahead and pay the $100? Because it's not right. <laughs> you got to stand on principles sometimes in your life. That was too much for this game. And so I just didn't buy it. I said, heck with it. I was thrown on it. Well, on Prime Days, they had it for $60, free shipping. So it cost me 60 bucks, And I was very happy. I thought that was fair. But Target had it on their online store for $50. So some people even got a better deal than I did. And those are fair prices for what you're getting in this box. It's a nice publishing job. This is in the Everdale universe. Laura and I never acquired Everdale because the font size on those cards was to the point where we couldn't read it. And anybody that has vision problems, and it's just not old people, a lot of people have problems with vision. We just never considered that game for that reason. But they fixed that problem in <laughs> Everdell Far Shore, and we're glad to have this game. And we've played it a couple of times already. But yep. uh, we really, really like this engine builder and enjoy it very much. Very similar to Everdell, but uh, I understand it d does some things that the expansions had added to Everdell yeah. and are in this game. If you don't have Everdell, this is the one to get. Yeah. So, yeah, Far Shore. Now, this they had Forbidden Jungle. Uh, it's a cooperative game from Matt Laycock, the, you know, of course, creator of Pandemic and, and Era Medieval Age we have by him. And, and all the Forbiddens. Yeah, all the Forbidden series. And they come in these tin cans, which I like. But some people complain about this. I like these tin cans. Uh, we put this on display up on our shelf by our big dice and, and gaming items that we have on display. And I like that in Forbidden Jungle. And it's... You know, it's got aliens. I don't know. We've not played this game. So nope. it's got aliens in there that you're trying to, that are trying to overrun. They're laying eggs. Yeah, laying eggs and overrunning you. Uh, and you've got to kind of uh, get rid of those aliens before you get defeated. But I'm sure it works very similar to the other Forbidden games, which we love Forbidden Desert. And uh, what was the other game we played? Forbidden Island. Forbidden Island. And, yeah. uh, and Forbidden Desert was very nice. But for whatever reason, yeah, we just... I don't know, if they republished that game to make it a little more attractive on the table, I think maybe we that We played would... that game a lot. Yeah, too, we played so. a lot, but uh, I'm this, try this, something new. this one's a little prettier. Yeah. I, that means something to me. Yep. I'm sorry. I'm, yep. I'm shallow. Hey, you know what, you guys? This one also was on Prime Days. Oh, this box weighs a ton. How many cards are in here? It's ridiculous. I think there's, oh gosh, I added it up, but it doesn't say on the back. Yeah, but this was 16 bucks on Prime Days. Brand new. It's Sentinels of the multiverse, the classic com comic book card game, the definitive edition. So man, I'm, I can take a lid off and show there's a ton of stuff in here. I mean, I've always wanted to play Sentinels. Comic books that tell you, you know, rule book and playbook, and then all these beautiful cards. Yeah, I mean, a lot of cards in here. I can't wait to play this game. But I, I never wanted to buy it because uh, it's kind of like Damien's Tower, Adventure Tactics. You have to play three characters, I think, in this yeah. game. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't mind that. It, it didn't bother me in Diamond's Tower uh, Adventure Tactics. But hey, I'm going to play this game, and for 15 bucks, I'll give it a go. 16 bucks, excuse me. The last game I refused to buy for a long time was Sleeping Gods. 
And the reason was I hate spiral notebooks and board games. And if I'm going to read a novel, I'm going to read a novel by somebody that is a good writer. I stayed away from Sleeping Gods. It just didn't, didn't intrigue me at all. And this was on Prime Days for $48, this Distant Skies thing, which is supposed to be in that universe. So we, for $48, I'm going to go ahead and play it and, and see what I think. I, I, I have some preconceptions about the game, which I'm trying to get out of my head so that I can play the game and make a, a proper judgment on it. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of anxious to play it. Yeah, and I, a few months ago, I acquired this, Sleeping Gods Primeval Peril. And it's supposed to be Sleeping Gods in a short amount of time. Yeah matter of hours or something yeah where uh, sleeping gods is ridiculously long and i don't know what ryan lockett has in mind for board games but his board games i just have never uh, been attracted to them and i've owned i've played near owned and played near and far owned and played above and below owned and played artifacts inc what was the other Islebound. one Islebound. and they just don't sit well with me i don't care for them the only one that blew me away was Empires of the Void 2 by Ryan Lockett. It's the best game I've ever played by him. The art in that game, his art was meant for science fiction. It is so immersive in Empire of the Void 2. See, I haven't played Empires of the Void. Empires of the Void 2, I can testify, is an outstanding epic space game. Uh, if you like that kind of epic feel to a game, you're going to love that game. I, I, I'm not talking about that game, I'm talking about Distant Skies, but I'll let you know what I think about this once we get it played. I don't mind the maps being in spiral notebooks, that's fine. But, you know, when it comes to the story in the game, yeah, I like it to be on decks of cards. This is not, and I wish Ryan would kind of develop a game where you have encounter cards that you go to for when you go to different locations. A lot like Touch of Evil or Fortune and Glory, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, hey, we'll, I'll let you know what uh, we think of this game when it happens. And that's our haul for that convention <laughs> and some Prime Day items that we purchased. Again, we sold 100, bought 30, and that's the kind of uh, thing I like to, that makes me feel good when I'm purging things. To be fair, we have a lot of games here because of the channel that we wouldn't normally have. And uh, this year I made a point of not purchasing so many games, uh, new games, for the calendar year for my videos. I'm just going to go to conventions and film them and play them uh, 2024 titles as much as possible. I have acquired four 2024 you titles. You might be acquiring one more. What's that? Captain Flip. Captain Flip. Uh, <laughs> Captain Flip is a good game, guys. <laughs> Should have won the Spiel des Jahres. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to cry about it. I mean, the other game, the one, what was the Sky Team? Yeah. That was a good game, but man, Captain Flip is just fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just gaming fun. And uh, I thought that should have won because I think it's going to have a wider family audience. Fun. It's a family fun game. It's going to have a wider audience. Yeah. And, and it's going, I think that should have been, yeah, the Spiel, mm -hmm. Spiel des Jahres winner. But I'm, I'm just the bones collector. They don't even know I exist. So, hey, that's it. I love every one of you. Please take a second and like and subscribe to the channel and I hope you're having a great day board gaming wherever you happen to be and please to make sure to keep on board gaming it's the best hobby on the planet because of some of the games I showed you here and I'll let you know what I think of them in a future video and I'll see you the next time here on the Bones Collector. Bye. -bye.